Now, good morning. morning. It's good to see all of you this morning. It's a beautiful day, and we're here to worship and praise God. So we will begin with a call to worship. We are gathered here to broaden our foundation of faith. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Now we'll join in singing hymn 103, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Now I invite you to welcome one another to this morning's service. everyone. I didn't get around. Oh, that's right. I can't forget you, can I? <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> and I better say hi to your dad. And welcome back, Leon. Leon's with us again today, so he's feeling better. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Merklin. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, anyway, it's good to see all of you this morning. Uh, we have uh, quite a f- few things going on. It's a busy week. Uh, we do have the uh, youth group today, and then we have Bible study uh, at noon tomorrow. We have a meal with that. Our group's been growing, so but we still have room. It's uh, we're in our oh, have I think three more weeks. We will skip next week. Uh, but uh, we do have it tomorrow when they have the Tuesday morning Bible study. Uh, Thursday, I go to Ray and preach. Saturday, or Friday, I can't forget Friday. That's the reason it's so busy. <laughs> it's a soup supper. If you haven't signed up to uh, help or to bring things or whatever, we still have the sheets in there. And uh, Saturday, we have the men's breakfast. Uh, next Sunday, the uh, <clears throat> bishop signs is our new bishop of the great plains conference he'll be in colby meeting with uh, two separate times with the pastors and then uh, he'll meet i think it's at six o'clock in colby at the united methodist church there for any of the laity that want to come and meet him and then after that i'll be driving part way to branson where i'll be going for uh, about four days for uh, for uh, some uh, studies and uh, then I think after that, you'll have to check and see what else is going on. <laughs> okay, anybody have any other? And, oh, yes, a uh, c- couple things. Uh, the uh, thrift store, uh, as uh, we're starting to, to get back to being open more, more times, and we're getting a lot more stuff, which means we need more help. And this last week, we actually were open uh, Monday morning and afternoon, Tuesday morning and afternoon, and just Wednesday for a little bit. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I think he, yeah, because <laughs> I think she was there all day on Wednesday. <laughs> and then Thursday and Friday and Saturday are normal hours. And so if anybody wants to help those extra times, uh, please see some from, from the thrift store or let me know or let uh, Julie know. And then I also at our committee meeting on Monday, uh, Joe Fruin and uh, Deanna Cree said that, hey, we can't come during the daytime, but we'd like to help at night. And so uh, they're, go- they're interested in coming up there one night a week or whatever and uh, helping for a few hours. So if any of you uh, are available at night and want to help, help a little bit, it's not to open the store up, but just mostly to go through things and stuff. But we'll let them see however they want to do it. So, <laughs> Okay, I uh, think that's all the announcements that I have. If there aren't any others, then I invite the children to come forward. And here they come. Now, how come your little sister was a shy one, and you weren't, and now you don't want to come up? <laughs> okay, well, you don't have to. You don't have to. But we got some fun things for you. Okay. <laughs> I knew that would do the trick. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Hey, you're excited, aren't you? Yeah. How's everybody doing? Oh, well, I'm glad you're doing so good. And why are we here this morning? I don't know. What's that? You're going to be here tomorrow? No. No, not tomorrow. But you're here today. And what did you tell me yesterday? Where were you going to see me? Um, I don't know. In, in church, didn't you tell me that? Yep. Why are you here in church? What? I'm thinking. Oh, you're thinking? <laughs> Come on, you gave an answer. What was your answer? Gosh. God. What about God? Is God good or is he bad? Good. He's good. How do you know he's good? The Bible. The Bible tells you. And you, how, where do you learn about the Bible? At Sunday school and coming to church and going to vacation Bible school. You're, what? Um, that was my grandma's donkey. It was your grandma's? Oh. Well, anyway, we're here because of God. We want to learn more about God. And God does so many things for us, doesn't he? Yes. 
Can you tell me anything that he's done for you? Oh, <laughs> very, hey, mom and dad, you shouldn't get lost when you go on a walk in the park. Because <laughs> God will help, help your daughter find you. <laughs> Sometimes you feel really lost, don't you? But God helps you out, doesn't he? Yeah. God does lots of things for us. He loves us even when nobody else loves us. Even when we're bad, bad and it seems like nobody's forgiven us, does God forgive us? He does, doesn't he? And so God is, he's our life. And that's why you come here is so that you can learn more about him. And as you grow older, you, you will be close to him more and more and more. Notice we don't have as many high school and junior high people out there as we should. But they have had a good foundation. And hopefully someday they will start getting more involved with God again. And so... Guys, listen. You who? <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, that's what that's what we're here for. We're getting a learn, good learning, learning about God, and God will become a way of life for us. There's other things that are important. Some of you will be in bands. Some of you will be football players and basketball players and things like that. But guess what? None of those things save you. Jesus is the one who saves you. And so that's why we always need to be close to him. So would you join me in an echo prayer? Dear God, thank you for Sunday school and church. And thank you for the teachers who teach me. I enjoy your Bible stories and the things they teach me. Thank you for loving me and for forgiving me. Help me to love you with all my heart and help me to love all your creation. Thank you for Jesus Christ. In his name I pray. Amen. Well, what I've been trying to tell you is that you get, you get equipped. You know what equipped means? That means you take the things with you. If you're going to play football, are you going to play it without a helmet? No, no you're not. If you're, if you're going to go skiing, are you going to go skiing without skis? No. <laughs> not very well, are you? But there... <laughs> Does he snow without skis or ski without snow? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, we're going to have the right things that we need. Well, so you will have some things to know more about Jesus. We're going to give you a coloring page. But if you want to have a coloring page, what else do you need? Crayons. So you can each get a, cray a coloring page, and then you can get uh, six crayons. Okay. They're front and back. So you're all equipped to go out and color. I want to color mine at the table. Oh, yeah, good. Okay, color yours at the table. That's a good idea. <laughs> There you go, Pierce. Jeez, who didn't get any yet? Uh... Miss Molly. And we got to give you one, too. Let's see. Anybody else? You get your crayons? You gotta be equipped too. <laughs> Here, I'll just grab you some. I got six. They may all be the same color, I don't know, but <laughs> Yep.
Did you get a pink one? Yeah, you got a pink one. Got a white one? There you go. Okay, you can go. But white don't work on white. Oh, no, white doesn't work on white. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> See, they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> well, it's time now to uh, share the scriptures with you, and, okay, <clears throat> our first scripture this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, uh, <clears throat> Jeremiah is now is writing uh, after uh, a lot of the bad things have happened, after they've been in exile, but the thing that he's promising them is that God is going to uh, remain, remain present with them, uh, He's not only going to give them a fresh start, but he's going to help them rebuild, and they're going to be a wonderful nation. But he's also going to approach things differently because he's going to expect the people to know him, and he's going to write their write a new covenant, write their, his word on their hearts so they'll know him, and then uh, he can become a part of their life because that's one of the things that's happened in the past and still happens today is people... We say we belong to God and we know God's word, but we wander away from it all the time. But uh, if we have his word in our hearts, then we can't wander away from it. So we're in chapter 31, verses 27 through 34. And this, uh, actually to, today, it was tough for me to decide which one of these four scriptures to preach from because uh, all four of them are some of my favorites. And uh, you know, a lot of times I do preach on this one, but today I, I passed it up in favor of 2 Timothy the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seeds of human and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down, to overthrow, to destroy, and to bring evil, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they will no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die from their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant when, that I made with their ancestors when I led them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Then I invite you to turn in your hymnals. We're on Psalm 119, and we're going to do the first eight verses. It's on page 841. Psalm 119, which is the longest psalm in the Bible, on page 841, and we're doing the first eight verses. <clears throat> Psalm 119, blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Also, who also do no wrong, but walk in God's ways. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. And then turn to Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Uh, Jesus is telling them a parable about how important it is to always pray. And what he's emphasizing here is that we need to be persistent in praying. Keep praying. We, not, we may not seem to be getting what we're praying for, but uh, he says, believe me, God will uh, listen to you and, and give you the things that you need, but you have to be persistent. 
Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by coming continually. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes... Who will he, find, will he find faith on earth? And now, I invite the ushers to come forward as we worship and praise God by giving him our gifts. Now join with me in prayer. Almighty God, we give to you because you have given so much to us. We know that it doesn't take much in your hands to do some marvelous things. And so we pray that you use these gifts to bring your word to those who are living in darkness, to those who have their, their doubts. And not only do we give these finances, but we give ourselves because we know that you will use us to bring your light to the world as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we'll join in singing hymn 601, Thy Word.
Tilion. Now it's time to share our joys and concerns. So what joys do we bring with us this morning? Oh, come on. There's got to be some. It's, it's what? And Cindy's birthday. Cindy's birthday. Well, good. She's what, in Argentina? Okay, well, I hope she's having a good time there. It's, it's also Pastor Appreciation Month. So, on behalf of the congregation, we wanted to give him a basket and a gift certificate. We all know a lot of the things that he does, from the men's breakfast to Bible studies to the children's garden to you name it, helping at the thrift store. Or Don't make up too many things. <laughs> But there is another thing that probably a lot of people don't know is I had the privilege to go to the charge conference, which some people might wonder about saying that's a privilege, but it really was. <laughs> when our DS says that we are a model church for all of his conference and for a large part of the state, we are one of five churches that our numbers are growing. And that's Partially because of this guy with bringing the children in and involving them in the church. And the DS told us one thing that you can't get other churches to understand is sense of community. And I wanted to show you some of the sense of community. Uh, the DS was talking about that sense of community, everybody you think of their church community. Church isn't the end of the community. Any children can be at the garden. There's people from other churches come help with the thrift store. We're just pretty much everywhere out in our entire community. And that's something that they said other churches are striving to be like us and are trying to use us as a model throughout the rest of the conference. So I think that's a pretty big feather. I, I appreciate it, and, uh, you know, you, the things you say are so kind, and, and there's no way anybody can live up to it, but it takes everybody. You know, I wasn't the one who, who brought the thrift store in or brought in all the volunteers. I mean, look at the thrift store, how many different churches and people from the community come to that and help out, and it just takes everybody, and uh, so you guys know all about community and reaching out, but we always can do a little better. And it always needs to be challenged, and that's what God's Word does. I, I kind of speak God's Word sometimes and challenge people, but because that's what's there, though. And today it's going to be the same, same, same thing, always challenge, challenging us to have a good foundation and roots and to, and to continue to grow. And uh, the only way we can do it is when we, we all go out there together and, and try, to, try to tell people about God and live God out through the way that we, we live. So anyway, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and um, it's uh, it just it's it's nice to know you're loved. So, okay, other joys. Well, let's see. Okay, yes. Yeah, I think most of our uh, boys teams anyway are undefeated, and we'll be real proud of them and their coaches and the uh, the support of the school and the community. So that's real really nice. And our girl, girls' teams, I went and watched their volleyball match, and they won uh, both of their matches, played really well. I was real impressed. So we can be real, real proud of that. Okay, other joys. Let's see, we, uh, Anita Miller is having a birthday, so that's a joy. Anybody else having birthdays or anniversaries or anything special like that? Uh, happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks to a mother-in-law, she reminds everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, see, they mentioned this morning at the early worship service that uh, we, had, uh, we have beautiful fall colors all around us. And uh, 
Sandy decorated the altar up here. She said, I went overboard. And I said, how can you go overboard? Put it, Paul colors up. Well, that's what we see outside. It's beautiful. And so that's something we had to be thankful for. Also, if you've driven around, you see the winter wheat is looking nice. And then the harvest. Man, it's really going to town. Working, working uh, at that real hard. And so lots of things to be thankful for. Uh, yesterday, uh, several people from St. Francis went over to Hagler for their uh, tumbleweed festival. I don't know why anybody wants to celebrate tumbleweeds, but, <laughs> but anyway, it's amazing what that little town does with just a few people and all the festivals they have. And uh, my uh, daughter, Emily, came over with her family, and the boys had a, had a good time uh, with doing lots of different things. They didn't want to dress up in, in their Halloween costumes, but otherwise they, they had a good time. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, that's a, those are lots of, lots of joys, lots of things to be thankful for. Okay, uh, any others? Let's see, uh, another thing to be thankful for is Leon is getting better, and that's good. Carol Redding was also at worship this morning. She's been a sick lady, and, but she's making improvement, and uh, she said she'll be back at the thrift store this week. And so anyway, that's, that's uh, good. Uh, and... So, let's see. Oh, yes, yes. I even forgot to mention that at the first one. Yes, Denon and Drew have a new baby girl. Does anybody know if she's uh, home yet or not? No, okay. Okay, well, we want to keep them in our prayers. Uh, Drew and Denon gave birth on October the 12th to Angely Ann. and weighed four pounds and 14 ounces and uh, about, what, seven weeks early, I think. And so uh, we want to keep them in our, in our prayers. Okay, uh, let's see. And, yeah. Some. Yeah, yeah, the Christian church is celebrating 125 years. And so, yeah, make sure we congratulate them. It's important that, uh, that we all are, you know, children of God and, and worship him and praise him and are here to to be examples for others, so. Okay, uh, see, other concerns, Marlene Lebfram uh, fell, uh, not this week, but the week before, and I went by and, and I visited her, and yesterday, she's making improvement, but she still doesn't look like Marlene. Uh, she broke her, her uh, right arm, and uh, it's in a kind of a temporary cast right now, and then she also broke uh, bones in her jaws up here, Right now, they're not uh, going to set them. They say they're growing back in place, but she has to get that checked every week. And uh, so do keep her in your prayers. And uh, your daughter is having surgery tomorrow on her knee. So we want to make sure we keep uh, her in our prayers, Christina Stafford. Uh, she broke it playing volleyball, and she's real disappointed because she's going to have to be out of athletics for a while. But we, we will pray for her to have a good surgery and good recovery from that and then to uh, do what she's told, right? <laughs> yep. So I know, I know her mom and dad both can be good examples for her because they've had to go through a lot of struggles themselves, and they will, they will be there, and, but our whole, whole church and community will be there too. So uh, those are the main, main ones. We've mentioned uh, Gary and Patrick and um, Deloy and some of those in the past, so keep them in your prayers as, as well. Okay, any others that some of you know? There aren't? Okay, then we will have a silent prayer where we talk and listen to God, then we'll have a pastoral prayer, and then we'll join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray. Dear God, we gather here this morning, we're reminded that we are the church and that we're here not just to, to come, but to be the church, to be the living word of God. 
to be equipped so that we can go out and to share your word with others, to be examples for others through the choices that we make and the ways that we live and through our, through our faith that helps us through the tough times. So help us to continue to go forth and to, to do that. We're thankful for birthdays, for the birth of new babies, for the healing touch that many have experienced, for the love that's in our lives, for this wonderful community, for our young people and their enthusiasm in participating in extracurricular activities, for all those adults that work with them, and for each one of us who are examples of what it means to be a, a follower. So help us to just remain faithful in doing that each and every day. We thank you for peace and pray for peace for the world. We also come with con concerns. We lift up those who are struggling with things in their life. We lift up Christina, who's going to be having surgery. For Marlene, Marlene who's recovering from a fall. For Others that we've been praying for in the past that are struggling with different issues. And there are many we may not know about, but we know you know about them. We know that you know what they need. And so we pray for your presence to be there with them and to, to help, help them be able to get back on the, on the right foot, get back and to have trust and faith, and then to go out and, and to serve others. Thank you for Jesus Christ, who not only came and told us about you, and showed us the kind of God you are, but he showed us an example of sacrificial love when he gave his life so that we can be forgiven of our sins and be in an eternal relationship. Let that be who we are. And let the foundation that we've had continue to direct us to serving others. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Together we unite our voices as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our, <coughs> give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. <coughs> and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'm going to share with you uh, a letter that Timothy has written to the church. It's in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 14 through chapter 4, verse 5. And Timothy's trying to remind the Christians how important it is to have a good foundation, knowing the Word of God. And as we have that good foundation, then we're to live our lives as Christ would want us to live and to go out and to do things to help one, one another. And we have to beware because there, there are people out there that are not always wanting to listen to the, the word of God. They, they want things their own way, and so they wander off. And uh, we need to, need to beware of, of that and, uh, and remember to turn to God's word, that it is all scripture is inspired by God. So chapter... <clears throat> uh, no, okay, anyway... Chapter uh, 3, start with 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for a correction and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead, in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to miss. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, 
Do the work of an evangelist. Carry out your ministry fully. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, as I mentioned, uh, next Sunday, after I go to Colby to, to hear the new bishop, I'll be setting out to go part way to Branson, Missouri. And since I know that I'm making that trip, it's important to be prepared, to be equipped. And so as I was looking over my car, I realized that the two back tires were getting pretty bare. <laughs> So I went out to a co-op and bought two new tires. Then I checked the fluids to make sure they were okay. Then had to get the oil changed and do all of those things so that if I'm equipped, I can hopefully have a safe trip. That doesn't guarantee a safe trip, but when you plan and when you have the right things with you, it makes it a little bit easier to have the right trip, to make sure that things turn out the way you want them to turn out. And this is what Timothy is telling the church, that they need to be equipped and have a good foundation so that they can always turn to God, always know that God's there, and always be guided and directed by God. And so that's something that we have to, have to start with right here in our own church, in our own community, and to notice it's not me. You guys are doing a good job building up these places up here, bringing in the young people, and then bringing their children to church. Yes, we could bring a lot more, but you know what? We're doing a whole lot better than most of them are. But the important thing is that we're teaching them that what's important is Jesus Christ. Now, they learn lots of other things. I know as a parent, you tell them, you better study and make good grades. And you better have good manners. And you better work hard and clean your room and eat healthy. You tell them that, right? <laughs> but that's not the most important things in their life. You better not fight with your brothers and sisters, right? <laughs> like some do up here. And you better treat people in the right way. And you better not be greedy. And you need to, oh, need to learn music. You need to learn to be a good athlete. All of those things are important, but those aren't the things that give a person salvation. They're not the things that lead to eternal life. They help make life better. But there's only one thing that can save us, only one thing that can give us contentment and peace, and that's the relationship with God, with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And that's why it's important to give them a good foundation. And most of us are here because we've had a good foundation. Maybe it came when we were children. Maybe it became later when we were older because we heard about God and the place that we joined or came to worship God offered us opportunities to learn how to pray, to learn about the Bible, to learn how to do acts of service and be kindness and share forgiveness and love with one another. Whatever it is, the foundation was there, and then we were able to build on it because they continue to have classes. They continue to encourage us to pray and continue to encourage us to come and worship and continue to be in fellowship with one another and to come to Bible studies and to have daily devotions and things like that. That all is part of a good foundation, and that's the first thing that Titus is stressing. We have to have that good foundation. And when we have that good foundation, then we can go forth and we can do the things that we need to do to be able to show the world uh, God's love, display God's love for other people who may not have that love in their lives. And so it's important that we... Once we get trained and once we, we have learned and have that good foundation, that we go forth and do the things that we, we need to do. But it starts, Timothy says, with knowing that all Scripture is inspired by God. Now get that, inspired by God. In other words, these people that have written these things for us, and even the people today that speak to us, they are inspired by God. 
God doesn't necessarily write all the words down, but he inspires them to, ha to have the desire to want to share the information that they've learned, the understanding that they have with others so that they can come to know God. That's what Timothy is doing. That's what Paul is doing. That's what James is doing. That's what Moses did. That's what the Israelites did when they shared their faith with others. And Jeremiah is doing the same thing, except he is having to do more prophesizing. He's having to do more warning because people are wandering away and forgetting about the foundation that they have. And that same thing can happen to us today. So, but we need to focus on the scriptures. And so that's one of the things that our church is really good about doing. We have, well, first of all, we read all four scriptures nearly every Sunday. I know when it's, when it's time for communion, I say that we're rushed on time, so we leave out some of the scriptures. But I always tell you to read them, don't I? Because it's important. You never know when there might be the thing that you might need to hear might be in that scripture. And then we not only read those scriptures, but then we also, we have the upper rooms that are out there so that you can have a daily devotion, a daily reminder of a little scripture. Then we have the Bible studies that meet once a week, and a lot of them have things that you're to do each and every day, like this one we've been doing on Mondays at noon. We meet on Mondays and discuss basically the scriptures that we read for the five days during the week. And so we're challenged to, to grow each and every day by reading the scriptures, heeding them, and learning and understanding them so that they can become a part of our our life. And so that's what we're to do as a church, to give the people the opportunity to go ahead and grow, to mature, so that they can be more proficient and more equipped for every good work. See, if we're going to be able to do, to do something well, then we're going to have to have the foundation, know what it is that God wants us to do, and then have the courage to, to continue to go forth and do it. And to know that God's going to give us the courage, he's going to give us the endurance, he's going to give us the guidance, he's going to give us the little push that we need, he's going to help reminding us that we need to be faithful and we need to be patient as well at some times because it's not always easy when you're out there trying to, to tell people about the word of God, when you're trying to live out God's word in your life. Because there's always negativity. There's always Satan out there trying to tell you that there's something better. There's always the world out there trying to tell you that this is where you really find happiness. If you have enough money, you'll be happy. If you have the right job, you'll be happy. If you're living in the right home, you've got all you need. If you've got a wonderful family, you have everything. But if you've tried to just center your life on those things... You're disappointed. You find out that that is not where the answer is. And so the answer, he says then, is to put, build your life around God. And then after you've got the foundation, after you know that all scripture is inspired by God, then you're to do these things. And the first thing he says is, I urge you to proclaim the message. Oh, does that mean you have to be pastors? No. In fact, pastors probably sometimes are the least efficient in getting people to come to God. You are the ones that are close to your family and your friends and your neighbors. You're the ones that people see in all the places in the community and, and everywhere else. And they're going to watch you. And if you're setting good examples, if you... Have faith so that no matter what it is you're going through, you're going to kind of stay on an even keel. They're going to see that. And somebody's going to come up and, and ask, ask you, how can you stay like that, Marsha? How can you sit in the thrift store all day on Wednesdays and, and clean these little photographs? <laughs> Wouldn't that, that get on your nerves? And Marcia says, no, because I'm just doing God's work. 
<laughs> That's what it's all about. And so we all can proclaim. Do it not even with saying words, but by following Christ and treating one another with love and respect and forgiveness and not judging, but just telling people the good news, showing people the good news. After we've done that, then he says we're to be persistent, whether time is favorable or unfavorable. Hmm, persistent, whether it's favorable or unfavorable. Ah, persistent in sharing the good news with others. Share it over and over. You may have invited somebody to church a hundred times and they didn't come. Or you may have been down at coffee and, and just told people about the wonderful things God is doing, but they don't seem to care. But see, the time may not always be right in that person's life for them to be ready to turn to God. And so you keep doing it over and over and over again. I would always get upset because, as an adult, because my dad would never go to church. My mom never did when we were growing up, but once they moved from Angleton to Lockhart where she lived in town and she could walk, she went to church. She loved doing it, and she, it became an important part of her life. But my dad wouldn't go. We would come and visit on holidays and try to get dad to go to church. No, he wouldn't go. And then I did exactly what you're not supposed to do. I went one time on a Sunday, and we got ready for church, and I didn't ask Dad to come. And we get in the car, and all of a sudden, here comes Dad walking out of the house, and he's waving. Oh, what, Dad? What is it? Somebody, a phone call? No, I want to go to church with you. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> Dad, burn it. I didn't <laughs> ask him. <laughs> so you never know when the time is right. But after that, when we went to church, he wanted to go. And he would go with my mom. You never know, but you have to keep giving, you know, spreading the word, giving the example, and you never know when things are going to happen. And so you have to keep being persistent over and over and over. And then it says you have to convince. Convince. Not by yelling at somebody, not by telling somebody they're doing things the wrong way, but by continuing to do the right things over and over and over, by continuing to reach out and serve God and doing those extra little things. And those are the things that convince, can convince other people that they need that consistency in their own life, that they need that peace, that sovereignty, that sense of well-being, that can only come through God's presence. Because God's presence can do all kinds of things for you. It can bring you understandings that you didn't have any idea that you were getting from God. Just this last week in our Tuesday morning Bible study, Dixie Curry. If you see Dixie, you tell her that I talked about her. I, I, I told her this morning, I said, I'm going to talk about you today. And she said, okay, I, no, I don't know. <laughs> but we were at our Tuesday morning Bible study, studying a passage that we were all fairly well acquainted with. But I was trying to challenge them to look at it in a different way, to see if there were some insights that were there that they were overlooking. And so we began talking about it. And at first, they were kind of on the same old path. But pretty soon, both Dixie and I, at the same time, we go, hey, I see something about this passage that I never saw before. And, I look, and we both said it at the same time. And then this morning I found out that Louise Schlepp said, I wanted to say the same thing. I said, see, God is there. We felt the Spirit. We, he gave us the insight to see something we hadn't seen before. And that's the way God is. God wants us to come to new understandings, to be able to continually to grow. And so he is trying to open us up. And that's why it's so important that we continue each and every day to have Bible studies and to, and to have daily devotions. We have quite a few Bible studies in our church. Not everybody comes to them. The time isn't right yet. But guess what? We're going to keep inviting you because sometimes the time will right. You will have a little bit more available time. 
then you can come and do things. You know, that's the thing with I mentioned with a thrift store. Somebody say, hey, we can work at night, but we can't come during the day. Well, yay, there's a, you know, hey, the time wasn't right to work before, but now there is a time. And so the same, same things with the Bible studies. We're going to keep offering them. We're going to have short ones. We're going to have long-term ones. We're going to have things that are about the Bible. We're going to have things that are about topics because everybody has a different way that they can connect to God. Everybody's different in the way that they learn, in the way that they want to, to reach out and to help. And so we have to be versatile so that we can be there for everybody. And so that's what Timothy is, is talking about here. And the last thing that he stresses is the word of God is the scriptures are, are, are uh, <laughs> there. And God is the one, one who inspires them. And Yet, there are so many people that think that that's not where the true meaning of life is. And so, they start turning away. They say, hey, this is what God's word is about. They just emphasize one or two things. And those one or two things, they can be ne so negative that it turns them into being negative people. See, we need to be broad-minded and broad-focused. The main thing that God wants us to talk about is his love. That's love for everybody. Not just certain people, but it's everybody. And it doesn't matter what you've done. God forgives you and accepts you and continues to love you. And so that's what we need, need to be sharing with, with one another. And when we share that with, with one another, then these people who begin concentrating on just one or two things or wander off, as he says here, on unsound doctrine, they will begin to realize that they're making mistakes because Satan's out there always trying to draw us away from God. And sometimes we step away and we fall. But sometimes we step away and there's someone there to remind us that we don't have to be down in the gutter, that God's word will give us the right thing for us to hear, the right thing for us to say, and the right things for us to do. And then we will no longer think that just certain doctrines are, are what we, we should be following. We should be following the true meaning, and that is that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. He's the one thing that we need no matter what. One of the things that I learned when I was doing disaster response is that these people have gone through a lot, whether it's a tornado or a flood or a hurricane or a fire or whatever, they are down and out. But the one thing that they like to hear about is, is God. They like to, to even, they'll tell you how, what God has done for them during this, 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 this disaster. They won't center their lives just on, oh, why, did they, why do I have to get mistreated? No, they look at what God did. Marlene kept going over and over. It could have been, my fall could have been so much worse. When I looked at her, it's like, I don't see how, Marlene. <laughs> but see, she's not letting the negative part, the fact that she fell, getting her down and drawing her away from God. She's letting the parts where God helped her to help build her, build up her faith, and then she can build up the faith of others. And so that's what Timothy is saying that we need to do. Continue to have that good foundation, continue to reach out to God-inspired scriptures, then continue to, to build and grow as we do Bible studies and pray and things like that, and then go out and share the word with others no matter where they are, what they're going through, and then continue to just be persistent and keep doing it over and over and over. And then we will be equipped so that as we go through life, we will know that it's not wealth, it's not a good reputation, it's not the right house, it's not driving a fast old police car <laughs> that brings us <laughs> happiness. What it is, it's Jesus Christ in our heart. And no one can take that away from us. We may wander off and think there's something better, but once we have it, it's always there. 
and it will give you what you need. Thanks be to a loving God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we sang thy word. Now we're going to join in singing those 600, which is one page over, the wonderful words of life. Because the Bible does give us what we, what we need to know about God. So if you're able, please stand and join us in singing. Wonderful words, beautiful. Okay, you just extended that just right. Uh, but I was going to say I forgot the, the youth on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We're going to be setting up the tables, so spread the word among the youth, okay? And now... These are beautiful, wonderful words. God is always there to help guide us and direct us and to take his love out to the world. And so as these girls take the light out, remember that you can take that light out too as you have Jesus in your heart. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> there we go. And let's go forth in peace. Amen. <laughs>